Eric McClanahan with No Rest for the Weekend. We are here at New York Comic Con, held every October in the Javits Center here in Manhattan. We're going to be talking to some cosplayers. We're going to be talking to New York Times bestselling author R.A. Salvatore about his Drizzt series set in the Forgotten Realms universe of Dungeons & Dragons right after this. Sponsored by Black Magic Design, the world's highest quality products for the feature film, post, and broadcast industries. BlackMagicDesign.com. All right, we're out here at Comic Con, and everyone is dressed to impress. Uh, I ran into the Scarlet Witch and Wonder Woman here, and I wanted to just ask you a little bit about uh, your experience here at Comic Con why you dress as the characters you dress as, and what other characters you dress as. So you are? My name is Candace, um, and also known as Candace B. Cosplay, and I am dressed as Scarlet Witch, and I chose this cosplay because Elizabeth Olsen is here today, and also because I wanted to match my friend Wonder Woman and in like a similar sort of cosplay. <laughs> and Wonder Woman? I'm Susie. Um, I love cosplaying Wonder Woman because she's tall and powerful. Um, so that's why I'm here today, here, her today, and this is our first New York Comic Con. Really? Yeah. So the, the, you haven't been here before. Were you, were you able to be here yesterday? Yes. All right, and you're going to be here the next couple days? Yeah, all four days. At different costumes every day? Yes. What are we looking forward to tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow I will be dressed as Batgirl, and tomorrow I'll be the Queen of the Amazons, uh, Queen Hippolyta from Justice League. Excellent. And Sunday? Sunday, I'll be Giselle from Enchanted, and I'll be both Andy, Amy Pond and uh, Ruby Roundhouse from Jumanji. They're both Karen Gillan characters. Gotcha. Excellent. Excellent. Bye. Wonderful. And what were you yesterday? Yesterday, I was Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas, and yesterday, I was Captain Marvel from The Marvels. Excellent. Wonderful. Well, I hope you get to meet Elizabeth Olsen, and I think she's going to love the, the outfit. I think it looks amazing. Thank and you. thank you so much for talking to me, and have a great time. Thank you. I'm talking to some of the cosplayers we're coming across, and I found Harley Quinn here, strapped, ready to roll. Uh, tell me about this costume and why you chose it. Well, first off, it's Dr. Harleen Quinzel. So you said it wrong. Respect. From the Arkham City video game. That's specific. How did I choose this costume? Um, growing up, I really liked the Arkham City games, or the Arkham games, and Arkham City was my favorite. I've loved Harley for my entire life, and this was, was my favorite outfit of hers. Sometimes they can be like the short shorts and stuff, which I like all versions, but I just, I don't know, something about this spoke to me when I was younger. And I actually made this costume about six years ago so this isn't one of my like best works but I'd never worn it outside and then I finally became a cosplayer because I didn't actually know what cosplay was when I made this I just thought it was a cool thing to have at my house um, so I do a lot of other builds now I mostly do Borderlands builds and cell shading but I just picked it because I loved Harley and this was my favorite version of her and now we got a gun. There you go. And you said you didn't really know what cosplaying was when you were putting this costume together. How did you discover cosplay? Um, by accident. So I grew up uh, I'm mostly an athlete. I was like a big time jock growing up, so I only ever did sports. And I was a nerd, but I just didn't know there was like another world. Um, and I started following people like Hendo Art. Um, and I just was like, whoa, she turned herself into a Borderlands character. That's cool art. And then my friend and cousin invited me to a convention once. And they were like, yeah, like you can dress up and stuff. I'm like, do people do people do that? Is that a thing? And then I wore a Lucy Hartfelia to my first convention and like saw cosplayers everywhere. And I was like, oh, now I'm in danger. And now we're years later and we're still doing this and spending so much money and time waking cosplay all the time. You found your people. It was an accident. <laughs> a happy accident. Yeah, for sure. Uh, now, are you going to be here tomorrow or the next day as well? I'm with Susie and Candice Cosplay. All right. And what are you going to be dressed as tomorrow? So tomorrow I will be uh, Supergirl from the Flash version of uh, the show. And I have Supergirl Rebirth. So the blue suit with the cropped jacket, the one where she doesn't have a cape. Okay. And Sunday I will be Snow White. But yesterday I was Borderlands 1 Commandant, Commandant Steele, leader of the Atlas Corporation.
Excellent. Thank you so much. Enjoy your time. All right, I'm here at New York Comic Con. I found the ringmaster, or maybe the ringmaster found me. Uh, tell me about this costume. Um, this costume here, um, I wanted to make something lighter than usual, so I decided to go with the trench coat and just the ring lights. Usually I have all tablets and stereos and speakers and cameras, so I'm getting older, so I want to make something lighter. So I adapted to my cosplay. Tell me about it, uh, incorporating technology into costuming. Well, I've always been a nerd. I used to be a computer technician. Um, so as technology progressed, I got to touch screens, I got out of that field, and just became more of an entertainer, comedian. Now, what is it about cosplaying that appeals to you? Like, what, what is it about the characters? Because this is an original character. Yes, definitely. Yep, no, this isn't an established IP. Exactly. I've never been a cosplayer, always an original character. Uh, and and why, why, I guess? Um, I've always had that, I, I, I'm still 14 years old inside. I've never grown, I've loved it, the adrenaline, the rush, everything about it. Now there's a lot of cosplayers here today. What's the favorite that you've seen so far today? My best friend, Jamal Johns. He's, he's an outstanding cosplayer. There's so many of them really. I can't really just specifically name one, but if I gotta name one, yeah, Jamal Johns. He's the one that got me here and everything, paid for my ticket and all that, so I gotta sh give a shout out to him. Well, thank you so much, Ricardo. Have a great time. You got it. And remember, if you're being followed, take plenty of selfies. I'm here with the one and only Flash. Tell me about this costume. That costume actually was made for the first uh, premiere of the Flash movie in Toronto and also Los Angeles. So it took me over a year while it was also the pandemic. So I worked hard, I put my sweat in it, and this is the result. Uh, so Barry Allen Flash or Wally West Flash? Barry Allen. Barry Allen, the original. Yes. And I know that I am in love with Wally West, but this one is more of Barry suit. I would agree. Yeah, I think uh, Wally usually has like the yellow undertones on there. This is clearly the red flash. Yes, exactly. So we go all red for New York Comic Con. <laughs> now, are you here all weekend or just today? Um, I was here Thursday, uh, Friday, and Saturday also as well. Excellent. And flash all the time? Flash all the time. All flash, all flash every day. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I love it. Uh, now, why, why the flash? Uh, there's so many. Heroes in the DC pantheon you could have chosen. What is it about the Flash that appeals to you? The whole story, like quick story, um, I used to do track and field. So track and field is so close to my heart. So when I actually discovered the Flash, I just wanted to be like, hey, he's running. I'm, I love running. Why don't I do it? So that's why I, I choose the Flash. And it's been since I'm 16. Excellent. Well, I can see the joy in your face. So I, I know you're happy to do it. We're happy to see it. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. have, a have a great time. It's a fantastic day here at New York Comic Con, and I'm here with Mr. Fantastic himself. Uh, tell me about this this cosplay. Well, this is one of my most fantastic cosplays. Um, I'm actually the head of the New York Fantastic Four. We're a group that obviously cosplays the Fantastic Four. Um, I usually do read. Um, a lot of times, I'm quite hammered, so but we have the entire group here. We're actually hosting the Marvel meetup at 3.30 over right down there, a little ways down, down the tunnel. And um, we're just looking forward to, to getting a bunch of Marvel cosplayers together and having uh, a terrific time, maybe even fantastic. I saw you were squaring off with Dr. Doom over there. Are you excited for Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal of the character coming next year? I'm excited and curious to see what they do, to be honest. I think that it's, it's one of those things where you're like, you're like, you're shocked that it happened, but you're, then you look back at it and you're like, is that the right call? We'll see how they handle it, though. I think, I think Marvel will do a pretty good job with them. And Marvel is finally, Marvel Studios is now tackling their version of the Fantastic Four after a couple of false starts. Are you excited about that? I am. I, I want to see a good Fantastic I love the first two. Um, that's what we based our team around initially. And then the, with the 2015 one, we were a little disappointed, not gonna lie. But with the new ones, I'm hoping that they create a, a story that's just compelling and brings those characters out. It's because they need to be, they're just, they're just iconic. And it's rare that you find someone who's their own best friend. Half man, half dog, barf from Spaceballs. Tell me about this costume. Uh, I've been working on it for a couple of years. It started off without the jumpsuit, and then when I finally got it, I just, I like 
trying to cosplay as something that I kind of fit, and John Candy kind of seemed perfect for it. So, how many times have you seen the film? Uh, more than I can count. <laughs> I'm already a big Star Wars fan as it is, so Spaceballs is right in my alley. Now I keep hearing they're threatening to make another. How do you feel about that? Another Spaceballs? Uh, I don't think it's ever going to happen, personally, just because uh, th there's no merchandise. They already did Spaceballs and merchandising. They don't need to do another movie. They're good. <laughs> uh, now, have you? Are you here all weekend? No, just for today. Just for today. Have you been here before? Yes. Uh, what did you dress as last? Did you cosplay last year? And what did you dress as? Same thing. I've been doing bar for a couple of years, actually. Excellent. I think the milk bones are a nice touch. I thought so, too. Did you want one? I'm good. <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, like, I'm making my way around and thankfully haven't walked into any doors yet, so it's okay. <laughs> now, are you here all weekend? I'm here today and tomorrow. And what are you dressing as tomorrow? Darth Maul. Nice. I have my lightsaber waving around and everything. I saw a Wolverine earlier with a lightsaber. I was like, that's dangerous. We don't talk about that. That's too much power. <laughs> I don't think it's okay. Well, speaking of power, thank you for the wonderful weather today. It's a lovely day, and I thank you for that. Oh, well, I was going to be outside, so, but, you know, around 5 o'clock, I'd probably call it a day. That's fair. Thank you. Thank you. You have a great time. <laughs> you too. Here at New York Comic Con, checking out some of the cosplayers. And earlier, when we were speaking with uh, Ringmaster, I asked him his favorite cosplay, and he said, I have to call out my buddy Jamal Johns. He's the big robot. And I'm like, oh, I did see him. So tell me about this costume. So this is from the Fallout universe. It's called the X-02 Black Devil. It's an enclave power armor. So they're soldiers that live out on the wasteland from the old government. So it's from Fallout. Uh, I have played the game, and also there is the Amazon series, which is really good. When did you make this costume? So I made it about three months ago. Um, I do have a full-time job, so it was I had to dedicate time after work, a few hours every day, to put this together. Yeah. Is this the first costume you've made, or have you done this before? Oh, no. This isn't my first rodeo out in the wasteland. No, I've been, this is actually my 10 year anniversary here at New York Comic Con. And what brought you into cosplaying? Like, how did you define this, this culture? So I was uh, making a fan film called Dark Superman, which is on YouTube, little plug right there. And I was scouting for DC characters. And my friend brought me to my first Comic Con back in 2013. So it's actually about 11 years now. Um, but when I started cosplaying was the year after. So venturing out, looking for those actors and people that had their own costumes to appear in that movie, that's when I discovered the convention. And what was your first cosplay? My first cosplay was Lex Luthor, yeah, in power armor. Excellent, excellent. Are you going to be here tomorrow? I will be here tomorrow, yeah. Uh, we'll be doing the power armor again or maybe yeah, something I'm else? We'll be doing B from Cyberpunk. Excellent. Right. Thank you so much, Jamal. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. Eric McClanahan here with R.A. Salvatore. We are talking about your appearance here at New York Comic Con. Yep. Um, this is one of the biggest Comic Cons in the nation, shortly behind San Diego. Yeah. Now, you have been writing the Drizzt series for about 36 years now. Uh, I've been writing it for 37, but the books came out 36 years ago. Yeah, 1987 they started it. I understand that they're, they're being republished, relaunched yes. with new art. Tell me about that decision and what that means for the future of Drizzt and your view. I mean, I think it was time, first of all, to my dismay, mass market paperbacks pretty much gone away. So everything is trade now. And, um, but I think they wanted to make the covers all a bit more uniform and just up, upgrade the look a little bit. And, you know, I mean, I have, I have mixed feelings because that original Larry Elmore cover for the Crystal Shard still remains like my favorite cover ever. And, you know, I, I knew a lot, Todd Lockwood and I are dear friends and I loved all his work. But I'm really excited that they're doing it, get some of the new art out there and um, they're doing a really good job with it. We meet Drizzt in the Crystal Shard in yes. Medias Rest. He's already, uh, he's fleshed out an established character and since then, you've gone back, you've done some of the origin in Homeland, and obviously, you know, he has all these many adventures. How many adventures do you think he has in him? Because every, every time you put pen to paper, it has to be cinematic, it has to be novel-worthy. How many situations can you put this man through, how, through the thresher? But here's the thing about Drifts, okay? When I started writing Drifts, I was 30, uh, 20, 30, 28 years old, and... I'm 65 now, and I've changed a lot over the years. Uh, everybody does, just the way you see the world. So I just want the characters to grow with me. The fight scenes, I can always do a fight scene. It doesn't matter if it's him or Jarl Axel or Entreri or Bruner, it doesn't matter. I can do that. 
so I just I just had a lot of fun with it. I, I, I thought of it as my kind of life journey through the world. This is the path I'm walking. And, the, and it's great because so many people decided to walk beside me and we can have these conversations all the way with the readers. Um, that's the way I just looked at these books. And, you know, I mean, the Dritz series, I thought it's been over like five times before. Uh, after the, when I was writing The Halfling's Gem, which was the third book in the, in the Icewind Dale trilogy, they said, people are tired with these characters, tie it all up in the end, and we want to go on to something else. Okay. And then the people weren't done. And you said Dritz was really fleshed out, but he, I don't think he really was until I wrote the Dark Elf trilogy. Because that's when I really, that's when I started doing the essays. Mm -hmm. And really getting into his head, and the character became more important to me, more meaningful to me, because this was how I was like making my own way through the world. This is how I would, I would take the characters and I would put them in situations about things that were bugging me, about the big questions of who we are, why we are. And I would make them answer if you will, through their eyes. And, and so for me, it's just, been, it's just been a fun journey. In that same vein, do you not shy away from having some of the situations or developments in the Forgotten Realms mirror our own world so that people can make sense of what we're going through right now in think, the future over I, the past I think any years. author who tells you my book is not an analogy, you know, Tolkien was fav famous for saying that, is either fooling themselves or fooling you. We are, we are a product of, the, of our experiences and what we're going through. We are, I remember when I was writing the cleric books for Wizards way back in the early 90s, the first Gulf War was going on. And when I went back and reread the book for my first pass, before I went to the editor, I realized that I had used the term hunker down like 30 times because um, General Schwarzkopf that he kept saying we're hunkering down, they're hunkering down, they're hunkering down. And, and I had it on because I'm always aware of what's going on. One of the good things and bad things about being an author is you have to constantly be watching the world around you. So it's, it's always background noise for me when I'm writing. I'm not shy from that. Um, what I don't like is when people read something and think if it's from a, from a character in the book and think that that's me, they don't have like this concept of an unreliable narrator, right? In the books, that drives me crazy. And it's like, I, but I'm, I'm pretty forthcoming on what I believe and who I am and I have a voice and I live in a country where I can have a voice. I like that. When I showed up to, to meet up with you, I asked one of the ladies out front, I said, hey, I'm here to speak with uh, Bob Salvatore. We're doing an interview with him. And they were like, so many people are here to see him. They kind of like had to test me to make sure I wasn't a fanboy who is getting access. You are a draw, you are popular. Like, how do, how do you not let that go to your head? How do you stay humble? I still don't believe it. Um, it blows my mind. Whenever I see, I remember the first time I, one of my books showed up and it was in Japanese. And I was like, what the heck? You know, I opened from the back. And it was like, it, it just, I, Ari Salvatore and Bob Salvatore are two different people. I still live up, I still live in the town I was born in, uh, a little, Plastics factory town in central Massachusetts. I, I, I'm the same guy. I don't, this, the, this, this, the, I am lucky enough to be able to do something that other people apparently enjoy and they pay me to do it. So, you know, life's good. It's, it, but it's, it doesn't make me better than anyone or anyone better than me. I'm just Bob and it's all I ever want to be and I don't want to be anything else. And it's not, that's not like some false humility. I just, I find the stories that people that come to my signings tell me more interesting than the stories I write most of the time. So that's, that's just the way I look at the world. Well, that's wonderful. I'm really glad to talk to you. This has been refreshing, and I hope you have a great time at the con. So that's all we've got for you today here at New York Comic Con. Thank you for taking this trip down the rabbit hole. If you want more content, you can visit us at norestfortheweekendpodcast.com or subscribe on your favorite podcast app. You can also find us on YouTube at youtube.com backslash getbehindtherabbit. I'd like to thank everyone who took the time to speak with us today and our sponsors at Black Magic Design. For the BTRP Media Network, I'm Eric McClanahan. I'll see you next time. This is the BTRP Media Network.